Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dean Rogers Show. Today, I've got a very special guest, Mr. Brandon Elliott. Brandon, welcome to the show. Dean, what's happening, man? Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, man. I'm super excited. Uh, We met online years ago and we were both in real estate and you were doing credit. Uh, We were going to the same church. We actually saw each other for the first time at church camp, men's retreat. Uh, That was cool. And uh, dude, I've always just resonated with your energy and your hustle and everything. So I'm stoked to have you here just to kind of like set the stage for people, let let, uh, people know who you are and what you're about. So um, you've invested out of state and in San Diego, where we both live, using the Burr strategy. Um, that has built eight and a half million dollars of of assets, uh, thirty thousand dollars a month in passive income, and you started with thirty thousand dollars of cash. Yeah. Uh, you you also very excitingly help business owners on how to get up to five hundred thousand dollars at zero percent interest every six months using credit. Now, this is arguably one of the most underutilized tool in of any business Yes, is, is actually business credit. We all know about personal credit, but business credit, we need to learn more about that. So that's why you're here. Um, if you want to connect with Brandon on social, you can hit him up on Instagram, Brandon Elliott Investments or Facebook, Brandon Elliott Investor. Um, and we'll be talking about your credit council elite today. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about that, you can go to creditcouncilelite.com forward slash Dean. Of course, we'll have all the socials, the website up on the screen. But dude, you got all this cool, impressive stuff, but we all got a story on how we get there. And I'm excited to start there and then get into some juicy stuff so our listeners can walk away with their minds blown exploding with excitement on how they can use business credit to help them in their business. So let's, let's get this popping. Let's go, man. First <laughs> off, I just got to thank you, bro. I, I appreciate you so much. You've like paved the way in, in many different uh, ways in the real estate game. So uh, just very thankful for your commitment and having me on here. I know you got a fresh baby at home, so fresh. Uh, you could be anywhere <laughs> else, but you're with this guy right now. So I appreciate you. Of course, um, man. So long story short, come from American poor, right? I say that because we're blessed in America. Uh, grew up on Section 8, um, Social Security with my mom. My mom uh, was a single parent mother, you know, grew up manic, depressive, bipolar. And so there was just struggles with that. And um, and I found myself, you know, getting out of New Jersey and, and moving out here to sunny San Diego, California, fell in love with uh, this opportunity that I found in real estate, right? And uh, I was doing door-to-door sales at the time. And what's what's uh, most incredible behind it is it was uh, selling for Kirby vacuum cleaners. I got good at it, nice. but I got recruited into a real estate investment company at the time. And that just kind of like changed everything. It, the light bulb started going off. I saw opportunities. I saw like the systems in place. And, uh, and it really just like, it was a little bit of education, way more motivation though. So I started rocking and rolling with that. And, um, soon enough, I I really just went down this path of getting as much education as I could to, to get into real estate. Right. And I didn't have any funds really to get started. So, you know, backtracking a little bit, I, I found myself um, with one foot in, one foot out, and I actually had an explosion in my apartment at the time when I was living in <laughs> uh, Pacific Beach. I was making hash oil uh, like a moron. So yep. um, I used to be a big pothead at the time, very long time ago. This was back in 2011, 2012. And uh, so that particular moment, I was literally on fire, burnt 40% of my body, they wow. induced me into a coma. I had to learn how to walk again. It was, it, it was crazy. Wow. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah. That's a life moment right there. Yeah. It was wild. So that was the turning point of like, Hey, something needs to give, right? I, I got a little bit of education in real estate, but 
this explosion um, and the consequences behind it, you know, I, I thank God, like later years down the road fighting this, I ended up finding myself on house arrest and two felonies and misdemeanor. It was like, I didn't have many other options except real estate. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah. It really opened up the door of like, hey, I'm going to go all in on this. I'm at home, you know, and uh, I have time on my side because I didn't have any money. Right. Like people that have money normally don't have much time and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just studying all the books, YouTube and podcasts just like this to be able to get the education and kind of fine tune it. And I fell in love with the birth strategy. I started investing at a state and it just started snowballing as well as in other states. Um, and you know, the last couple of years I've been really focusing here locally in our backyard, San Diego. So we've done fix and flips, a um, couple wholesales, mostly just doing the burr set, uh, the burr strategy. And I, I totally fell in love with it. Yeah, man, what a journey. Um, I think what's, what's similar to, to most people's stories is they, they had something that just pushed them past the edge, like yeah. something happened in life where it was like, dude, I got to get my stuff figured out. You yeah, know? that's and, exactly uh, <laughs> what it was. It was humbling, but it was, yeah. you know, I've always felt like God, like definitely protects me in so many different ways. And that's why I was kind of like more just reckless a little bit. I was like, God's got me. I'm good. Um, <laughs> and he did that day too, but it was definitely a reality check. It was one of those things like I was wearing baseball gloves. I don't even like baseball. I don't know. I had baseball gloves from riding dirt bikes back in the day. So I put those on randomly. Uh, my shirt burned off me. My my uh, shorts burned off me. I was wearing basketball shorts. They, those burned off me and I was wearing socks and they they didn't. But literally the gloves and the socks like saved my hands and my feet. Otherwise, yeah. everything else I was like. I was like a, a fried chicken, you know, it was they, bad. They, so they found you butt naked with socks and baseball gloves on. <laughs> Luckily, I, I threw on some new shorts and I, I ran outside, but it was it was a hot mess. I had to put out the fire in my house. I blew out all the windows in my, oh my, gosh. In my apartment right off, right off uh, Grand. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, it was horrible, but yeah. it, it was a blessing. It was exactly what I needed. So I fell in love with real estate and you know, over time, I started having a lot of people that were raising their hand like, hey, I, I want to get into real estate. Like everybody realized it can be a great financial like tool mechanism in the future, right? They all want to yeah. get into it. However, they believe that they need a ton of funds to get started. So I started telling them like, oh, I, that wasn't me. Like I ended up saving up 30,000, which to me back then, that was a lot, you know, and, and it's still a lot, but it doesn't go far in real estate. Yeah. Right. So I saved up 30,000 and I utilized the rest all in credit. You oh, know, wow. so when there's a will, there's a way. I just figured out like, how can I get? I had some credit cards, I had some credit lines, and I figured out how to get credit limit increases, get cards around 60 to 100,000, and then pull out the money without any fees so that I could actually purchase real estate and then complete all my remodels with, with credit. So I stopped getting screwed over by contractors. Yeah. So I don't know if I ever told you this story, but when I first got started flipping, this is, let's call it a year. And it might've been, I was actually like a year and a half in, I had just started a couple flips yeah. and was feeling like, and I was, you know, partnering with my now business partner, um, cause I didn't have the funds myself. Like I, yeah. I couldn't go very far and I discovered a program where I could apply to different personal credit cards, not business credit cards, mm. but personal credit cards. And fortunately I had good credit at the time. And I was able to access a hundred thousand dollars through something similar to what you do, not the same, but similar. And it freed up a lot of cash and it gave me so much more confidence yeah. and ability to go out and take action and take down some of these properties. And that was, that was a big moment for me. So, um, I love it. So how did you like get your footing in the burst strategy? Is that kind of where you started in real estate? Yeah, that's I just fell in love with it. Like there's so many strategies in real estate and I think it's important for everybody to start there to realize like all the different moving pieces and what it looks like from beginning to end, your resources, time, all that stuff, but um for me it just lit up. I I love the idea of at the end of the day buying something, doing the full renovation to it, renting it out to a well-qualified tenant, and then getting all or most of my money back, mm -hmm. having huge cash on cash return. And if I can do it all with credit, 
then at the time I didn't have any money. So it was like, I didn't have a family to reach out to for, and I didn't even have the confidence to go to other people. I didn't know other people would lend me money. So I was like, you know, I guess it's going to be my bank's credit. And so I didn't qualify at the time for any like big loans or mortgages, even because I was working restaurants, you know, it it just doesn't go far. I was making like 30 to 40,000 a year. That's like nothing in San Diego. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So um, so that's how I got started. I, I started utilizing credit and and then the perks started coming with it. Like after a remodel, I would have enough points to go on a free vacation. That was nice. You know, uh, I got protection from not getting screwed over by contractors that didn't do the work or ran off with the money or whatever it was. Instead of showing up to court or trying to find them and hunt them down, I would literally just make a phone call to my to my bank and say, hey, I have the scope of work. I have the before and after pictures. He didn't do what he said he was going to. Can you please ask him about this? Right. And then they would give him the opportunity, but you know, they were in the wrong, so they wouldn't do anything. I would get my money back. Wow. So you can go to the creditors and actually like have a conversation. It's not just like a simple dispute. Like you can provide evidence and all that kind yeah. of stuff, huh? Yeah. Wow. So it it's it gave me the protection. And like you said, the confidence, you know, out once I realized you really got to be savvy out here in San Diego to go against like big boy investors. Yeah. You know, they're all million dollar plus. You gotta be all cash, no contingencies, and close in seven to ten days. You know, doing that, I had to have credit because of course, if it's a good deal, I'm gonna raise funds for it, like all real estate investors should. Um, but at the end of the day. Uh, having a backup plan, you know, for my fifty thousand dollars for you know my earnest money that went hard right away, you know, I I need some confidence to be able to know that I can come up with a couple extra hundred thousand from my credit and use hard money as the rest if needed. Mm-hmm. Man, okay, so let's uh, let's shift gears. Let's talk about what you're doing with business credit because I think this, yeah. like we said, such an underutilized tool. And for you, I've I've personally watched you along your journey. That's one of the you know amazing things about social media. We connected, yeah. we've talked, and, but I still feel like I'm up to speed with what you're doing because I get to watch your journey. And another thing that we didn't highlight is you've got some of the best uh, the best experiences when it comes to the perks of business credit. Yeah, and all of the points that you get and the business travel perks, like. We're gonna definitely dive into that because you're you're the uh, poster child for like you can not only get access to these funds a zero percent interest oh yeah and use that but all the benefits you get with the trips and like it's just it's just endless and it's fun to watch you along your journey I get jealous each time I'm like I know those were used with points dang it I need to get my <laughs> I game I know on. that whole trip was free <laughs> how do you do it <laughs> dang it <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> So uh, let's dive in, man. Let's talk about like your journey around that and ultimately what you've built, the company that you've built, helping other people, which is so cool. So let's just dive right in. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the benefits first, like the exciting okay. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the travel hacking, like that's that's some of the like most rewarding stuff. Everybody wants to like raise their hand and say, I want to travel the world. I want to, yep. I, I want to do it with friends, family on my own time. And, you know, being able to build a business around that, having the systems in place is crucial um, so that you can have the freedom. But, you know, we're teaching young guys with no job uh, to be able to get 350000 at 0% interest so that they can leverage into new assets as an entrepreneur, into real estate as a hard money lender, private money lender. And, um, and then being able to travel the world for free is just like the caveat on top, right? So mm-hmm. there's numerous ways. We just went down to Brazil for New Year's. I didn't know what to get Jennifer for Christmas. So I got her an experience. So <laughs> on Christmas, I was like, hey, babe, here you go. We're leaving in two days. And wow. uh, and it's really cool because um, for New Year's, they in uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, they end up doing uh, like lining up 10 boats right on the water, right on the ocean and uh, fireworks all at the same time. And 3 million people show up on this beach. Wow. I, I read it incorrectly when I first booked it. I thought it was 30,000. I'm naturally more <laughs> introvert. So 30,000 was like a lot, but I was like, I can, I can do this. But 3 million, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> Did your heart but, explode when you got there? Just seeing how many there were? It was incredible, dude. It was, but the energy was just so high. It, it was, it was, 
just uh it was one of those amazing experiences that uh that you want to be a part of right and experience with loved ones so the best part though is all free you know like the first class trips uh oh. going down there the the filet and, and alcohol um on the on the lay down beds like all that stuff was uh included the the upgrades to the to the hotels like all these things and um there's just so much benefit to that and having fun so you get to do it on a fraction of the cost if you're spending extra money out and about um but also i mean there's credit cards that people don't even know about that you know, give insurance on, and give like protection. Right. And there's other ones that will give the, you know, the travel uh, cards, the cashback rewards, you know, um, 0% interest. There's all these different benefits. And kind of like you in the beginning, I first started with personal credit. And I think a lot of us actually neglect to, to jump into business credit sooner than they really should. You know, like we're all in business, but a lot of us aren't utilizing business credit because yeah. it's too difficult. It's too hard. It's whatever, you know, um, so they end up leveraging their personal credit. And if you don't know what that end, then you'll quickly find out that you can jack things up really quick if you have high utilization or, yeah. or whatever it may be. Um, so it's important to know both, but really be educated on, on how to do this. So Credit Council Elite is what we started over the years. We started showing people how to get like business owners, how to actually be able to acquire over 500000 in um every six months as your percent interest. And there's a lot of benefits to that. You can get sign-up bonuses just from the banks, from uh, the credit cards themselves, and obviously the protection. But it's really... Like once you get these credit lines, being a good steward of it, you know, we can show people how to get their business, their personal credit from, uh, you know, the 700s to the 800 club in less than 30 days, business credit um, into a position that it looks sexy to the lenders. Like, you know, how to talk to the lenders, you know, what to say to position yourself. So uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. Obviously, we, we teach people how to fix credit as well. Um, but I think some of the caveats, the benefits, really, it comes down to building massive lines of credit and then leveraging it. Yeah. So I think a really great point before we dive even further in to the credit council elite is that distinguishing, distinguishing between personal and business. Yeah. And with me, like you said, I started by leveraging my personal credit Sure. <clears throat> and, and you touched on it, but I don't know if people truly understand, like if you leverage some of the perks and benefits you can with the personal, yep. it's all great and all. But once your credit report comes back to you the next month and you you've be maxed out yeah. the utilization of all these great perks and things that you've done to get access to that cash oh, yeah. as 0% interest, your credit's maxed out. And now if you want to go do the Burr strategy. Well, that's exactly, wow. that's what happened to me. That's yeah. what happened to me. My first couple, I was like, <laughs> hey, like I, I went back to the bank and I said, hey, I know I was right around the 800 mark. I know I'm in the like low 600s now, but it's just because my utilization, I have all this equity. You know, once we do this deal, you guys can just pay off the credit card or I will. Uh, but they were like, no, it doesn't work like that. Like we're judging you off your credit now. You're not a good steward of it. Your, your score is low. Your utilization's high. You know, yeah. you get declined. Your story so, and reason for doing it is good, but they don't care. They they, they want to see on paper. Yeah. What does that score say? What's your utilization? What's your yeah. credit worthiness? And that's why you don't want to mess with the personal. You want to leave that alone and and have, you know, fix it if you need it fixed. Sure. I know I'd always been in the 700s, always yep. in like the 720s, 740s. You literally jumped in a Experian for me, you clicked a few buttons and within minutes, yeah. I was in the 800s. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to give you a shout out and props for that. Cause like my credit score since then has always been flirting around in the 800s, you know? Yeah. So, um, and that's great for the burst strategy because they will look at your personal credit, but business, you want to get access to those funds from business. Yep. And most people don't even realize it. So how, how does someone start? Like what, what does someone have to do to even do that? Like what's the, how does, how do you even get started? 
Yeah, it's a good question. So there, there's a big list of things. So I'll start bullet pointing some so that people, if like, if you guys are taking notes right now, which you should, I encourage this, um, you know, you're going to want to write this stuff down because it will definitely help out. But um, just to clarify too, if anybody is a real estate investor here, which I know a majority of you guys are, then you want to have your FICO score at least at 760 and above so that you're getting the best rates. You know, 760 to 780 range and above, you're getting the best rates when it comes down to mortgages and loans, which is that's that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, so for business credit, right? Um, it really just comes down to uh, like a whole list of things, but um, some bullet points here is when it comes down to your name, first off, like the entity's name, you want it to be short and sweet. Something that is easy to spell because the first thing banks are going to do is simply like they're going to Google your name right away. Isn't that You're, hilarious? They're going to Google you. Yeah, they're going to Google your business name. <laughs> but guess what? They want to make sure that they can find you. If it's hard to mm-hmm. find you, and this is this is where SEO comes into play. You know, they want to see you everywhere. The more difficult it is for them to find you, the the more red flags start coming up. It starts becoming scary for them to think about lending a couple hundred thousand to you because they're like, oh God, if this guy doesn't pay, how are we going to find him? He just We can't even find him on social media right now. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like after you get the whole foundation ready, which it only really takes a few hours, um, but it comes down to setting yourself up for success with your SEO, Google My Business, and also apples to apples everywhere. When I say apples to apples, I mean, make sure you have a template of exactly what you like, what your business credit is, the name, the entity when it was started, the address. Um, the business phone number, the website, all these different things, the number of employees, because if you want it to say exactly the same as everywhere, so it matches up one time that the bank sees, oh, it says this here, but this over here, old address, different location, whatever, um, different number of employees, that's a red flag. The more red flags you have, uh, you know, you're out. So you want to yeah. just, you want to start, uh, just being cautious of that. Business address, I see so many people mess this up. So definitely take notes on this. If you do not have a brick and mortar office, and ideally that is the best, having a brick and mortar office. If you do not, it is okay. There's a lot of people, especially in the last several years, and after COVID, it was like the best example ever, an excuse for it really, is to have a home office. That is okay. Make sure, however, that you're actually putting at the end of the the street name, you want to put a suite and then number or letter after it. It's still going to go to that address. It's still going to be there, but um, you want to make sure it has that so that it has like a a business description behind it. If you utilize a, um, a virtual assistant or like a virtual address, a lot of these have been blacklisted with uh, the banks, believe it or not. So it makes it more difficult. Uh, they, if you get blacklisted with them, then it's more or less that entity is really only good for the protection that it serves, uh, not benefits to actually getting like lendable assets, financials. So you want to be very cautious of that. And um, a lot of people try using uh, like a, a UPS store or um like a PO box, you do not want to do that. That's like an ultimate blacklist as well. They're not going to trust you and it just looks fishy. So those are some key things that you want to really focus on. Having a business phone number, having on the voice message, having, hey, dial one for operations, dial two for marketing, dial three for sales. And it could all go to your cell phone at the end of the day. Um, But you should have hours of operation on that voice message. And... um, and really just set yourself up for success when it comes down to being apples to apples everywhere and seen as far everywhere as you can. You can utilize places like mozlocal.com or even jump on Fiverr and you can find guys for like 50, 60 bucks to blast it everywhere on all these different random sites you've never heard of. Yeah. So give you another shout out. So I, I had followed these step by steps when I started another entity for for e commerce and yeah. I went through everything brand new entity brand spanking new not yeah. my real estate business been doing it for years but brand spanking new entity I I needed it was critical for for what I was doing to get business credit yes not cash but business credit 
And I followed a step by step. And literally within, I think it was a, a, a week of, you know, going through it. And I kind of took my time. I didn't sit down and hunker through and do everything sure. all at once. But after a week of pecking at it and getting it done, the first time I applied to Amex, got 150 grand worth yes. of credit. Yeah. And it was literally just following step by step of what you said. So I know like if you do that and all the other stuff that you teach, because I just did that one thing for that one purpose. Like I I've seen what it can do already. So, oh yeah. Um, so let's, I love that. I didn't hear that testimony before. That's yeah. A good yeah. One. It's a new one. <laughs> I'm we'll, going to crop this it, one out. We'll, we'll cut it out. We'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that was cool. And now I think it'd be cool to kind of talk about what are, what are some of the, um, what are some of the right ways to use the credit? Yeah. Once you get it, once you get it. And the ideal up to $500,000, 0% interest every six months. What's the best way to be a good steward of the money, like you said? And what are some of the wrong ways? Where do people kind of get caught up? Because I'm sure there's a catch, right? Like you can get yourself caught up because at some point you got to return the money and recycle and use it. Of course. Yeah. So, you know... I I recently just redid our Credit Council Elite course so that we're talking about budgeting 101, like financials, just so to prep the mindset because uh, we really haven't seen this. But as we grow and scale, I know that somebody's going to come along, you know, and that <laughs> it could, and that would be devastating. Like that would break my heart tremendously because um, there's a huge difference between good debt and bad debt, right? I, I don't know <laughs> what people are doing necessarily with bad debt, except I can imagine they're going to the mall and spending more than they actually have. You know, when, mm-hmm. when they got the unlimited credit card or they, you know, get a couple hundred thousand at zero percent interest, they're they're buying whatever they want. You know, that's if you if it's not an asset, then don't buy it is how I look at it. Right. Uh, this this credit that we're showing people how to get. I really engrave into people that it's so important. It's so crucial to take it very, very serious and use it as if it's a a private money loan, a hard money loan. Like there's a due date behind this. Yes, you can move money around. If worst case comes to shove, like I'll show you how to protect yourself so you're not getting screwed over. But um, it's very important to put this stuff to work. You can get a little bit riskier with it, but uh, not too risky. You want to still have some safe bets. And this is just how I did it. So it's like in a short period of time, a few years, you can really compound this stuff and turn it into massive amounts of wealth. You know, I just purchased a property for my family back home in New Jersey last year. And, and it was like one of the proudest moments. Like it, it was incredible. And it was all because, you know, we, the, the gradual steps of just compounding your success in, in everything that you do. So I know a lot of our, a lot of our students that are crushing it in Credit Council Elite, what they are doing, for example, is uh, they are they're buying real estate. Like a lot of my community, just because like I'm a real estate investor as well, is th- they're very attracted to real estate. So if they're not already into real estate, they are well on their way. And so they just they got leads coming. They're using wholesalers uh, like you guys, and then they are basically. Um, just getting these funds so that they can do the burst strategy or private money lending and um, and secure their position, right? Um, so these are some of the things that they're doing. And we got people that are really starting to compound it, getting you know their first three to four properties and having you know four thousand extra per month coming in from rental income that you know they're only a couple grand out of pocket. Everything everything else has been utilized on credit. But we got other guys that are buying cars, that are flipping cars, uh, buying planes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, like buying planes and then reselling them, tuning them up, like flipping them, but utilizing credit to do this. And even even a guy out here in, in San Diego purchased a property for his dad and was able to do all this through credit. So it's some really wow. powerful stuff, man. So those are those are some good applications. Now let's let's maybe dive into a use case. Like what's a step-by-step use case that maybe you had or, you know, one of, one of your clients that went through the program, what are some like X's and O's if someone went through the process of getting the credit? Okay. How do, how do I take action with that? Cause this, this is real cash. Like you can, you can extract 
cash out of the credit yep. to where you have cash in your hands. Like you can go to yep. the bank, cash that in, yep. and now you can use it for arguably whatever you want. And again, like you said, you got to be careful with it. Like you, yeah, you need that assets. money. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be assets and it needs to be something that's going to be returned within a certain period of time so you can recycle it and basically reset that credit and then pull it again. So like what's a, what's a good use case to say like hey, I've done this or another client has done this of kind of walking through that journey of actually utilizing it. Yeah. So you know, after so obviously first thing first, you got to do your mass apply. A mass apply, long story short, it's an application sequence where you can get 10, 20, 30 or even 40 credit cards at once over a 30-day period. So once you get that, then um, you start getting all these cards in the mail. Uh, you're going to get sign up bonuses with them anywhere from five to 15,000 and just free cash. So that's amazing. But you want to be able to take wait, these. Wait, wait. What, what do you mean free cash? Yeah. So What's when you, <laughs> you know, like sign up bonuses. Yeah. When you open up a bank account. Yeah. So the last couple of years, I've been averaging $5,000 per year just by opening bank accounts. What? Yeah, so there, there's 4,300 banks. Not $5,000 of credit, but like, hey, we're going to give you money just by opening an account? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, yeah. I, I would be disappointed if I only got 5,000 in credit lines. We got people getting, you know, one credit card, 100,000 yeah. um, off their first go. But so the free cash behind it, just from opening up, because there's 4,300 banks nationwide and they're all in competition against each other, right? So when one bank is kind of doing a little less, sometimes they'll do promotions to try to keep mm. up and, and steal some customers from other banks. And um, and yeah, so you can get free money from doing it. Wow. So the name of the game is to have bank relationships. Most people yeah. can only raise their hand and say, I only have two, three bank accounts. You should have dozens upon dozens. Wowzer. Now, not to go off on too big of a tangent, but yeah. for you with all these different accounts, yep. all these different credit lines, are you entertaining those regularly? Like you've got money in all of them or you're playing a little bit of a game to get the benefits. And then it's like most of my money's here in this one or two bank accounts. Yes, that's a great question. So that that's exactly it. Most of my money is in two different bank accounts. However, um, I diversify a little bit, I guess, more than... I wouldn't say the average person, but to a certain degree um, across some. Um, most bank accounts, though, I am just having the minimum in there so that I'm not getting hit with any fees, of course. Mm -hmm. um, when So there's a couple different ways that how banks judge you internally. So it's first off, how long have you been with them? And that's where that comes into play. The longer you've been with them, the better. And then next is how much money... Well, how basically how many products and services you're taking advantage of them with them. You know, if you have multiple personal checking account, business checking account, CD, I don't recommend CDs, but uh, <laughs> they're actually going up now interest rates, but still, it's not that great <laughs> still. <laughs> uh, but the more products and services, the better, right? Because then they feel very like territorial, like, oh, they're not with anybody else. Um, and then lastly, it's how much money internally do you actually have in there? So how much money is going in and going out? It depends on the bank, but a good rule of thumb is anywhere from like one month, uh, 90 days or six months. So meaning if if they have a new product that you want to take advantage of coming up and you're like, oh, that looks good. I want to I want to be first in line for that. I would start moving money into that account. I'd start having a little rotation going in money in money out going through the different accounts. You can just transfer between your own accounts. It's totally good. Yeah. Um, and it's going to like kind of rev up the account. It's going to look good. And there's an internal rating that nobody really knows about um, with how much your balance is. Meaning a good rule is going to be, um, it's called a, a five high. And it is, um, it's like $10,000 or above that would be in that account. If you really want to win them over quickly, you put $100,000 or more in that bank account, wait about a week or so. And, you know, as long as you get them excited, <laughs> it will get them excited. It's going to want them like they're going to want to do more for you to win you over and make you happy, of course. But they're also like there's still so many moving pieces to be able to say the right things to fit within their box of lending 
Um, so it's not just that. Like if you got all the money in the world, you put a million dollars in, you still got to say a bunch of other things and position mm-hmm. yourself properly. So, um, but would yeah, that's you, would you burn a bridge if you did a rug pull after you got that new product and pulled the hundred out or not at all? No, that's the name of the game to a certain degree. I mean, it's like they don't they're only looking at your account hard when you are actually um applying for something, right? Yeah. So after that, as long as you're a good steward of it, you're making your monthly payments and so forth, you're good. Also, once you get over a million or so into the bank account. Um, you're going to be really transferred and, and it depends on the bank. There's some small credit unions that you put a couple hundred grand in, you're like the God over there. Right. Yeah. So, um, but when you put usually about a, roughly a million into a bank account, then, uh, you're going to be into a different classification. You're going to be in a wealth management type of group where you'll have your own kind of section. You'll start noticing that they'll reach out to you. They'll try treatment. doing, yeah. <laughs> they'll try rubbing the back a little bit more. They'll try yeah. making things work and help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, now what, what are, so, okay, let's go back to yeah, that, that application. Question. Yeah, yes. let's go back to the application. There's so much good stuff, man. I just get too excited. I'm like, oh man, what can I ask next? Yeah. Uh, so go into a real life application. If someone wants to get access to this cash that we were yeah. talking about, wants to go apply it, what does that what does that look like from a time frame? Like what period of time should they be injecting that cash and returning it? And what are some of the things that they can actually do with it? I know you talked about some of those things, but like Let's use yeah. one specific. Yeah, it gets deep with this because every bank um, has a different return. Like I always recommend 0% interest. If you're going to leverage it, I always recommend business credit, You know, so it's not showing on your personal. You're not covering or carrying debt on there, so your score doesn't fluctuate. And um, But most of these cards, credit cards, that is, will offer anywhere from six months to 12 months, uh, 15 months, 18 months, 20 months, or 22 months for 0% interest. Okay. So those are kind of the turnaround times of like, Hey, like, and, and I always like income wise, I always round down, um, expenses. I always round up same thing when it comes down to time expectancies, you know, like if you're a real estate investor, you already know that you expect it to be done in this time until you're a professional like Dean, uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna maybe be a little off on time um, or the number of, of certain things, you know? So you really, if you assume three months, just give yourself six months. Right. Um, And then if it's a fix and flip, great. If it's a, It's not really the market for that right now. So let's talk more. Um, You know, if it is a burst strategy, then, you know, you just want to have your lending kind of situated, right? Like know what the end lender that you're going to refinance with, what are their regulations? Do they need you to have it seasoned for 12 months or six months before you can actually do it? If so, then you're definitely going to want to have the 15, 18, 22 months type of repayment option. Um, doing all this, it, it really, you know, you can basically apply for this credit. If you do it in the right way, you'll be able to get the 10 to 40 credit cards over 30 days. Once you get this funding, then you can liquidate it into cash into your bank account. There's many different ways to do it, but once you get the cash into your bank account, then it's really your call. Like, where is the opportunities at? We always give people a couple different options. Uh, we always try to, not force, but you know, recommend uh, heavily. Real estate has always done us well. So yeah. if you get really educated on on the real estate side, then you know it, it's all calculated risk. Let's let's talk about your use case because I still remember the Facebook posts and seeing you standing at the bank getting stacks of cash. <laughs> like it just, it was just too good for Instagram. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it was just too good. So you were buying a fourplex in San Diego. So why, why don't you tell a story I thought that was. Um, and, and what the outcome was like the real <laughs> outcome. You ultimately didn't use the money. Right. And yeah. you still got benefits. So I almost, I won't give all the details, but let's just hash that out. So people can kind of hear like, what's, what's the power of having access to this? Like what yeah. you can actually do with it. Yeah. So 
this is where that confidence comes into play, right? There was an off-market deal through a wholesaler from another wholesaler. It was it was a chain reaction here. <laughs> Friends with benefits. It must have been. Um, Friends with and, benefits, Daisy Chain. That's right. And um, and so there was this incredible opportunity. It was the worst property on the block, right in the heart of North Park, um, right down the street from uh balboa park so i was like light bulbs are shooting off i was like this is perfect i'm going to turn this bad boy into an airbnb it's going to be incredible there's three units out of uh four that were filled you know one lady lived there for 40 plus years it was crazy still paying the same rent as she when she moved in i think i remember you Uh, helping her move out and do all that kind of stuff too like yeah you got to do what you got to do man Yeah. yeah I was like, there's no way that she's going to be doing this. And she was like, she was so sharp. She was awesome. We were praying with her. Um, we were helping her and everything. It was it was really a cool experience, honestly. Um, anyway, so I bought this property. I had to close in 10 days. I did all cash, no contingencies, $50,000 hard. Um and I needed, I had a hard money lender lined up. Um, they were covering like 75% of it or so. I needed to come up with about 400,000. Mm-hmm. So I ended up um, pulling out the money from my credit cards, but it was a 2% cash back rewards credit card that I was pulling this out from. Did you guys hear that? $400,000 cash yeah. from credit cards. Like, yeah. That- if you haven't heard about this before, your head's got to be exploding on opportunities that you can utilize this for. Like if you can get this right and get this stuff set up, which is is really like a, a it's a secret. Like most people don't know about this on purpose because they want to give you credit, they want you to use the credit and then make payments back to them so they're earning interest. But this is the actual real business way to use credit to yeah. your advantage. So you pulled $400,000 cash out. I still remember the pictures. Yeah. And you were saying 2% cash back. Yeah. So I got all these points for it. I got all this cash. And then of course I had, because it was a smoking deal, we picked it up for 1.25 million, put 160,000 into it. It appraised six months later, um, even like during COVID for 1.75 million. Um, and then now it's like, it's well over like 2.2 or 2.3 something. Wow. Um, so we got all of our money back out from it. Uh, but of course, like I was saying, as I pulled out the money, um, I, I had lenders, I had private money lenders. I was saying like, Hey man, I, I gotta be a part of that. Like, let me be a part of it. Come on. I want to, I want to see the process. And so I got to partner up with some buddies, you know, and they came in clutch. It, it was affordable. It was, it was, you know, there was no equity. It was debt positions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was secured by the real estate, but um, just because I had the capability of pulling out credit, I was confident in the deal. Mm-hmm. There's 20 other offers on that deal. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm ready. I'm good. Let's, let's sign right now. So I was able to get that um, and be able to basically put the cash rate back and onto the credit cards. But I, I stacked up all these points. I got free thousands of dollars just yeah. for the simple fact of taking the the couple hours to get the, these funds out. Really? Yeah. Um, so I, so love, really I love incredible. that story because it's, it's funny because you didn't actually end up using it. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Even though you might have needed to use it and it would have been critical to get that deal done, which sure. clearly was an incredible buy look look as just a short period of time has passed uh the equity that you have in it you refinance everything out um i mean the, the cash flow great. too the cash, the cash flow, flow is incredible. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so um but if we're like highlighting the business credit just by taking it out and having the mere fact that you had access to it but then you yeah. took it out you actually just put it right back because you didn't use it yeah no, no need to have it out sitting on the uh credit lines yep um and you actually made money by just pulling it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a savvy investor, man. Savvy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? What's cool though is that, you know, obviously that whole opportunity was awesome. Um, but I actually see a lot of. Well, first off, let me say um, before I get too far off, 
that, you know, utilizing that strategy of pulling out the cards, the, the cash from it, and then paying it right back off, that looks really good to the banks. The mm-hmm. banks will naturally give me credit limit increases because they were like, oh, dude, you you took out all the funds. You know, they got their swipe card fee and they got their money from it. It looks good. They see that I, I'm utilizing it and paying it off right away. They're attracted to that. So I'm a good steward of it. It's going to, you know, kind of bump up uh, the notch internally for me. Uh, for the bank rating. Um, next, I would just say I, I caution everybody with this because it, it does break my heart. So many people sleep on credit. They put credit on the back burner until they need it. Mm. And then until you need it, it's like, dude, I need it. I need it like today. I need it tomorrow. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like, there's so much to it. There's a process. It, there's a process. And the reason how I started teaching in credit counseling Lee and and building this out is because I saw a lot of the do it for you services that really were doing a bad job. Like they're they're doing them a disservice by getting them twenty to fifty thousand in credit lines versus a couple hundred thousand. Mm. You know, like when you know how to do this, you know how to do this, and you can help out your whole circle. You can help out yourself, your significant other, friends, family. Like, but you could crush it for yourself. I actually have um somebody uh. Quincy in our group that um, it's crazy. He ended up doing a mass apply. He partners with his friends and family to do a mass apply for them. And then his agreement with them is I'll take 50% of your credit to invest in real estate. I'll give you a 6% return instead of a 10% return. And you take the other 50%, be a good steward of it so we can get increases in in the future. And I'll pay you back this um, secured against real estate in 12 months or less. And he's got millions from just wow. helping out friends and family. Wow. That yeah. gets me excited. It's crazy, man. But you're getting, you're showing people the power of credit, but you're also showing them a, the power of real estate. The ones that would potentially be on the sidelines for too long, you know? Yeah. If you're watching this right now and you think that a couple extra hundred thousand or maybe like Quincy, a couple extra million dollars. If you think that would benefit your business, yeah, I want you to raise your hand as you're literally listening to this. If you're standing in the gym, if you're sitting at home, if you're laying in bed, like raise your hand. Like I'm raising my hand. I'm like, yes, <laughs> dude. Think about the opportunities that come across you that you are are not believing you can take advantage of because you don't have access to the funds, yep. right? Now. Of course, you and I as real estate guys, especially, we're going to say that you need to build relationships with other people, private lenders, hard money lenders. Of course, it's always the name of the game. But if you don't have any skin to put in the game, it can hold you back. Yes. I've experienced this firsthand myself when I first got started. And I can tell you, my confidence is much higher to be able to buy properties cash because I have the resources. It's a different game. Right. It is. So if this is one way for you to get in the game, or can is it is it a complement to where you're already at, then yes. this is the right thing for you and something you should pay attention to. So um, how can people get involved? Like they can go to credit elite.com forward slash dean. Yeah. But what's what's your program look like? Let's talk about that real quick. What's the program look like? Yeah. How long are they in it? You know, and how's that go? Yeah, so we got two programs. Um, our our high level one is going to be our private mastermind group. That is for a full year long, and it comes with two different meetup in person events where we bring in some high level speakers. Each person gets to mastermind in some high level groups um, to be able to really go over their problems, their situation, where they're currently at, to be able to grow and scale. It's all recorded on a thumb drive and uh, given to you at the end of the day on a thumb drive, but recorded obviously <laughs> on camera, right? Yep. Um, and we have monthly calls with that. Um, and then everything in our 90 uh, day challenge, which is our, our second uh, one that really everybody should go through. That one uh, comes with everything, obviously, like the, the mastermind group gets that as well. So the 90 day challenge, of course, it is for 90 days. And what we do is we set you up for success by having uh, a customer success manager to really hold you accountable, hold your hand, get you all the resources you need, and to be able to plug in with you on a regular basis. You can book as many calls with that individual as possible. So that's awesome. You're never doing this by yourself. There's a private Slack channel that have our, our communications going on. 
Um, and then we have uh, two experts, one for fix, fixing credit, as well as one for building credit. Um, that's personal and business. Get to the 800 club in less than 30 days. Take advantages of the bonuses and organize your mass apply in the right proper order um, so that you can fully maximize it and get four or five hundred thousand dollars in, in credit lines. So those are really the two big pieces, the fix and the build. So that's why we have dedicated uh, coaching experts for that. And that is weekly calls as a group. Um, and then of course there is basically, like I mentioned originally, we, we just redid our online course. So, um, if there is a question, trust me, there is a video on it. Like we really <laughs> simplified it and there is notes taken for you. I wish we had a uh, chat GPT before because right. <laughs> it would really make things way easier, but, uh, but we put in the hard work to really make sure that things are fine tuned. And so we have software in there. We have um, the video content, but we have calculators, spreadsheets, data points, like everything that you really need related towards credit and showing you educate, fix, build, and and leverage into true assets, buying real estate, travel hacking, you name it. Yeah. Well, dude, it's so, so cool. I, I'd say the last thing I'll say is, um, you know, real estate, you can go on YouTube University you can yeah. learn it. There's lots of different coaching programs. There's lots of meetup groups. There's lots of lots of things yep. to get in the game. Um, and it's easy to understand. There's a house, there's these numbers. Business credit's still pretty mysterious. Like there's a lot of tricks of the trades, and the, the tricks are changing. And like there's a there is a definitive process to it, having experienced it myself. And yeah. so um, so yeah, I'd say. From everything that I've seen, just following you and your journey, like having, I, I remember at one point talking to you, you had, you know, seven figures worth of credit available. Still you do. Know, yeah. Still do. Yeah. <laughs> Keep seeing you taking Backing all up. these paid for free trips. And I'm like, dang it. Oh man, that's so cool. Um, and just a just to totally utilizing it to your benefit to live a more fulfilled life and have access to these resources. And now you're helping so many other people doing it. So yeah. uh, man, I'm just fired up. I appreciate you coming on today. Guys, again, if you want to connect with Brandon on Instagram, it's Brandon Elliott Investments. If you want to connect with them on Facebook, Brandon Elliott Investor. Um, if you want to find out more about the actual Credit Council Elite, you can go to creditcouncilelite.com forward slash Dean and check it out. Um, Brandon, is there anything else you want to say before we go? Yeah. You know, I would say, first off, I got to thank you. I applaud you for everything that you do, man. Uh, you're such an inspiration. So I appreciate you for having me. It's a, it's a blessing for sure. Um, you know, there, there are other, just like real estate, there's a ton of real estate coaching out there. There's a good, uh, bit of people that are popping up doing this credit stuff. A lot of the guys that I'm teaching surprisingly, right. (laughs) Um, but what I'd say is how we are so special and different with Credit Council Elite is that like we're a one-stop shop. We're not just teaching business credit. We're not just teaching fixing credit. We're not just teaching travel, you know, hacking, right? Uh, we're, we're showing you all the above, everything related to credit and really giving you the tools and the contacts to be able to create generational wealth, the trust setups, the entity structure and all this stuff that really sets you up in the long run for tremendous success for your business. So um, I'm just very proud of where obviously we've come from to where we're at now and the impact that we're making, uh, just like you, man. So uh, very grateful. If, if you guys do want to take a, a peek at what we have going on, uh, there's a video kind of explaining a little bit more in detail. It's about 10 minutes long, but you'll be able to find that at creditcounselelite.com forward slash Dean. And that's just so that we can keep track of where everybody's coming from. So I appreciate you guys greatly. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the other side. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for being on again. I I was just excited to find out more details about it because I think this is just such an underutilized tool. So guys, make sure you connect with Brandon. Thanks again for being on another episode. And until next time, peace. Peace.